science, I'd like to make a comment about that. It's not one rude interruption, so I can give you a comment to scope with them. I'm sorry to impose on this event, and Marjorie, you spoke about accountability. My mother was killed by a defective Chrysler product. What? If it was your mother, you would be up here too. What does Chrysler plan on doing to the victims that they have? Sit down. They're out of here. My mother died because of a defective Chrysler product. If it was your mother, you would be up here too. I do. If I can just address a question that is of confidence and that is, I think, the other person that we saw. It was a serious talk and we appreciate it. I'm sorry? It was a serious talk and we appreciate it. The talk was serious. A few questions. Um, the, you gentleman, the gentleman that went around the room before that I think has been escorted out and was complaining about, um, used the term for a which is shame. Um, there's been and there continues to be a large degree of consternation in Italy about the fact that we have decided to shut down the plant in Sicily. This was announced on June 18th of last year. It was confirmed in subsequent meetings that I've had with both the unions and the government. We made our case um, very clear as to the reason that supported the decision, and the decision is irreversible. Um, I talked about the fact that this industry is going to run at roughly two-thirds of two-thirds utilization of its current installed capacity. The Sicilian plant is structurally unable to complete, compete, and we actually lose money on every car we manufacture. <coughs> We've explained this to the parties at the table. We've made it very clear. I, I just want to make sure that you understand that Fiat, as an organization, is going to transition this plant at the end of 2011 into a new future. The responsibility ultimately to deal with its citizens is the responsibility of the government and not of Fiat. We are, not, we are the largest industrial organization in Italy, but we do not have the responsibility to govern the country. And as such, we will do what's required. We will do what's required. We will The first real product that's coming out is the new uh, Grand Cherokee, which will be right available in YouTube. We have less than six billion and more than I told you on November the 4th. This has to do with the hibernation story. We're very, very prudent. I think the term that I used on November the 4th was parsimonious. People thought that it's an illness. It's not. We're just cheap. When will we see the first Italian? December 2010. When will we see the Fiat 500? December 2010. <laughs> <laughs> then we won't ask what it is. Dodge is a great brand. Dodge Ram was a great branded truck. Why'd you drop Dodge from your truck name? For two reasons. I, I think the Ram now as a brand is sufficiently strong, strong to stand on, stand on its own. So I'm not worried about the fact that it needed the emotional support of Dodge to sort of stand up. I mean, it's a full liner. Pick up. Um, it's a, it, it is a full liner of pickup offerings, and it's intended to be the basis on which we build a commercial vehicle business through uh, through the Chrysler organization. So, the, and as you well know, Fiat is the largest producer of commercial vehicles in Europe, and it intends to bring these over into the United States and use a Ram brand to penetrate the market. That's the first reason. And secondly, because one of the things that we talked about. You know, this whole notion of brand equity and what brands stand for. It is very, very difficult, to be honest, to try and reconcile what I consider to be the, you know, the, the key elements of the chromosomes of, of a RAM pickup driver with what I consider to be a more, a, a, a more general pa passenger brand like Dodge. And we've had long discussions with both Ralph Giles and Fred Diaz, who's here, who runs the, the, the RAM brand, as to whether the fact that we should keep this umbilical cord between Dodge and RAM. And I think we came, came away with the conclusion that it doesn't need to. I mean, Ram is big enough and strong enough to do this on its own, and it should. But in a, in a period where people seem to be contracting their brands, do that But they, they're contracting the brands because they have, they, they have significant overlaps in the product portfolio across the passenger car side. 
which is one of the nightmares that we all face, running multiple brains. The last thing you want walking into a Chrysler Jeep Dodge dealer, and now Ram, is to walk into a C-segment car, which has got two badges on it. Right? That's the best way to try and confuse a customer. So the debate, and the, I think the, the very thorough analysis that has gone on inside Chrysler, and which is the reason why we were very quiet until November 4th, is to identify exactly the type of vehicle in each one of these segments that the brands need to present to the marketplace without creating the inherent conflict within the, the, the dealership to try and choose one over the other. So we're not creating cannibalization of particular models within ourselves. I think Chrysler, and I think to, in a lot of, to the largest thing Fiat has in Europe, has created its own problem by so doing And I think we need to stop doing it. How do you justify the huge cost of Ferrari's men on Formula One racing? Um, two, two reasons. The first one is that um, Ferrari doesn't do any advertising at all. Zero. And it does effectively no marketing except through the Formula One venue. And the essence, I mean, Ferrari is a racing brand. It's been historically known to do this. It needs to prove its, its DNA every time it gets into, into the track. It's had rough patches, I, I mean, let's be clear. But it has, I mean, it's also had a phenomenal, successful history of wins on Formula One. And I think it needs to continue to do this. I think we're looking forward to the 2010 season with Alonso in. Um, I think you know, Alonso and, 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 and hopefully the recovery of Felipe will make a great thing. I, you know, the, we started working on the car last year early enough after we knew that somehow we had missed or misunderstood the directives of FIA on what was allowed and what was not allowed. So I, you know, I feel relatively comfortable that we're going to have a great 2010, and I think it's a source of pride, not just for Ferrari, I think it's a source of pride for, pride for the whole field group to be associated. Are you just as comfortable with having Mr. Schumacher hanging out on a Mercedes plane? I can make a really rude remark, but I'll pass. <laughs> so how many black sweaters do you have? I mean, how many black sweaters? I buy them in dozens. <laughs> That's it, so I don't sleep much, and I, and I buy all these on the internet, in case you're wondering. <laughs> this is I can't buy a car yet, but I buy them on the internet. So I, they come in a dozen at a time, they're on a regular order. This is the longest I've seen you without a cigarette. You haven't quit. I'm learning. What? You haven't quit. No, you, you, no, I'm fine. It's just you kept me up here all this time, otherwise I would have been out having one. One final, <laughs> one final question. Is it okay for Chrysler employees in Auburn Hills to wear open shirts and sweaters? Yeah. They don't need to wear suits. If they show up looking at me, I, you know, there are other colors other than black. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think, you know, yellow is fine. But I, you know, emulation, exact emulation may not be sort of advisable. <laughs> I may take it for an imposter or shoot or something. When you're in Detroit, what kind of Chrysler do you drive? When I'm in? Detroit. I drive, my favorite car is the Nitro. Um, I've driven, a, I, obviously I have a 300, I mean, you must, right? Um, um, but my, I, I, like the, I like the Nitro, I think it's a great, it's a cool car. And I'm not down saying this to make it a Ralph feel so excited about this, but it's a real cool car. Ralph's getting old. He's 40. And I should, I should uh, hasten to make the plug that Ralph will be speaking at the auto we designed for him tomorrow. He is. Yeah. On his birthday. On his birthday. Talking about I'm not commission. sure they'll have cake. But. Oh. Sergio, thank you very much for coming. It's always good.